Sarah L is fighting for her faith, or at least her interpretation of her faith. She made the decision to veil her face years ago. But from August the 1st, if she does so in public, she'll be breaking the law. A violation of her personal rights, in her opinion. I feel very disappointed. I feel like I thought we lived in a free society where people can believe what they want and they can wear whatever they want as, as long as they don't hurt other people. And I just get the feeling that, um, that I'm that I'm under attack somehow, that like I can't be myself. Sarah was born and raised in Denmark by Turkish parents. Her niqab is for her an expression of her piety. The upcoming ban prompted her to become an activist. She and her fellow activists are trying to win support for a demonstration in Copenhagen's Nurebro district, an area where many migrants live, and they're getting that support. Yeah, Amy. I think it's a um, violation of the human rights, and I don't think anyone should decide what people should wear. Just one other time when men are deciding what women are supposed to be wearing. So it's just ridiculous. It won't help anyone. I think you're kind of pushing them more away from society. I think it's important that you, can't, you accept that there, there's like a cultural difference. Sarah has come to Parliament to confront one of the initiators of the face covering ban, Mas Fuleta. He's a representative of the governing Conservative Venstre party, and he maintains that all face veils ought to be banned, although fewer than 200 women in Denmark wear a niqab or a burqa, the full body covering. They find no middle ground. Did you ever live with a Muslim? Did Why you ever... can't you answer my very because simple you're question? Very ignorant. You're very ignorant about Islam. You are placing Sharia law over laws of this society. I'm saying we That's live... why you're showing me right no, now. No, I'm saying we live That's in... That's why we need to legislate against the values you no, represent. No, I'm saying we live in Denmark. It's very sad. In Denmark That's we have the freedom of religion. The discussion escalates into an argument. The niqab is a symbol of religious freedom to some and of oppression of women to others. Both sides hurl accusations of totalitarian thinking. Niqab and the hijab uh, or other garments of, of that thought are all uh, instruments uh, to an end, and that end is social control of women and the nullification of the female gender, and we want to fight that. I feel like um, this law is Islamophobic. It's trying to make life difficult for Muslims and it's basically racist and I just felt like mass prove that. The ban on face coverings is one of several laws the government says it has introduced in an effort to integrate immigrants. Some critics say it will only divide society further. And anyway, veils are rarely seen in the streets of Denmark. Not even in the Imam Ali Mosque. At Friday prayers, the veil issue is a hot topic even among the men, and they actually approve of the ban. I'm against face covering, but about the hair, it's okay. About the other uh, parties, it's okay. But about face covering, or to, no, I'm against it. I'm against it, totally. We are Muslims in, uh, in a Western country, uh, Danish Muslims. We have to like, adapt as much as we can in, uh, in, uh, inside the limit of Islam. If you want to participate in a democratic society, then it will give you a lot of troubles. If you want to live a very isolated life, then it's your choice. This Muslim community is a liberal one. They tend to reject the new camp. The imam of the mosque also points out that veiling the face is not a religious duty. Islam doesn't say it's obligatory to actually wear the veil to cover your face. But if a woman chooses to do that, that's her free will. She can do that. Uh, personally, like uh, my opinion is the same as Islam, that women should wear modest, modest clothes that, that cover both their hair and the, and the body. Sarah describes the niqab as a sign of religious humility that can be worn as an act of free will. She doesn't accept the government's argument that women have to be protected from oppression and isolation. Her veil even caused friction with her own family. Not only does our family not impose this on us, but they're actually against it. Majority of the women in Denmark that wear the niqab have family members against them because they choose to practice their religion.
So it's the exact opposite. Sarah's facing a difficult future in Denmark. If she remains faithful to her beliefs, her idea of religious freedom could end in her being isolated within her own four walls.